Hello, Internet, and welcome. Come into our podcast. Come into our show, because you're at the 26th episode of Tissues of the Day, a comedy show about queer culture and relationships. I'm Robert, and I'm joined by my toaster that burns everything. David. Yeah, isn't that right, you little toaster? <laughs> That's uh, me. Everything <laughs> I touch dies. <laughs> no. <laughs> um... Today's episode is all about positivity, so why not start off on a positive note? And positivity is the flip side of the dark side. The snap in your crackle, the yes and in your butt. The stuff we need more of. <laughs> you like that one? Like I that? didn't I didn't vet this. That is entirely Robert's <laughs> definition of positivity. <laughs> <laughs> it the is yes today. And snap in your crackle butt. positivity. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're joined today by our special guest, Jamie Smith a certified life coach and law of attraction facilitator. Thanks for coming on, Jamie. Of course. I'm so happy to hear Robert's like, do you want to talk about this? It's my favorite subject. So thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, we couldn't think of anybody better. When we were like, we have a list of topics and that, when we hit positivity in the list, we're like, Jamie, Jamie. <laughs> Everyone's like, Jamie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, Jamie, uh, speaking of positive and wonderful things, is currently working on a children's book called Oh Yes I Can, Just Watch Me. And you can follow them at Jamie Smith Coach on Instagram and Facebook to learn more about that book, which is coming on out. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah. So last year during the pandemic, my mom, uh, who's been an educator for 30 years, she has been wanting to write a book for many, many years. She had a bunch of ideas, but she was feeling really, really stuck. Um, and it's perfect because it ties into the, today's uh, topic of what do you do when you feel stuck? Um, and so we were just, you know, zooming because I couldn't, she lives in Quebec. I couldn't meet up with her. And so we just were brainstorming ideas. And I said, well, why don't you just keep it simple, mom? And why don't you just write a story about your life? You know, my mom, uh, was born and healthy. And then at the age of three was diagnosed with polio. Um, and it ate away at her right leg. And as a result, it left her partially disabled. So, you know, growing up in the late 50s, early 60s with a disability, it was a little bit different back then. And she was always told, you know, you can't do that and you'll never get married and you'll never do this. And but she, inside her, she had all of these dreams. And I said, Mom, what did you tell people when people would tell you, you can't do that? And she would say with her Scottish accent, oh, yes, I can. Just watch me. And I said, Mom, mm -hmm. that that's the title of your book. Like, just keep it simple and write about that. She's like, but I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. And I said, well, you know, Mother's Day is coming up your gift instead of flowers or chocolates or whatever, we'll write it together. And that's what we did. We met for a month every day on zoom and we just figured it out. Yeah. And it's coming, nice. it's coming that's out in amazing. the fall. So it's about what do you do when you have, you know, you have dreams, but you know, you have naysayers or you have health issues as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's amazing. That's super inspirational. And they say the best art is with this art that comes from the heart, right? That you've lived and you've been through. Yes. So it's probably going to translate really well. I hope so. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Thanks for um, that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that, well, that's what we're here for. It's to share and visit our friends and our connection, but also provide them a platform to elevate themselves. Oh, love it. <laughs> so positive. It is. <laughs> Kawaii. <laughs> um, so, uh, Jamie, before yes. we get into the discussion portion of this, we're going to get into our first portion, which is called rapid fire questions. Okay. So pew, pew, pew. Ready for that? Yes. <laughs> okay. We're going to need you to just kind of go with your gut, answer, you know, immediately, keep it short, and don't judge yourself. Okay. Um, David and I are going to go back and forth, uh, giving you a question, and then you reply. Okay. Ready to go. Ready. You kick it off, David. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Driver or passenger? Passenger. Books or films? Films. Sweet or savory? Sweet. Short partners or tall partners? Short partners. Wow, okay. <laughs> uh, drama or comedy? <laughs> comedy. A song that's stuck in your head? Oh, uh, the wheels on the bus go round and round. I was chatting with my three-year-old nephew. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. We're, uh, weirdest food you've eaten? Uh, well, that's weird for me, but not weird in that part of the world, but uh, uh, crickets. Mm, grasshoppers. What do you yeah. wish? What do you wish you could do less of? Wow, <clears throat> less of probably my phone. <laughs> mm. 
you are no longer doing anything you're doing right now in terms of jobs and pursuits. You have one job you can pick in the world as an alternative. What would it be? Wow. I I think I would I would just be like on a sitcom or something. I'd be, yeah. Yeah. Would you prefer to DJ a whole night or dance a whole dance. night? Dance. In bed, do you prefer more time uptown or downtown? <laughs> <laughs> downtown. <laughs> Dad, okay good classic classic uh what do you hope to get out of this conversation oh my gosh this is um oh that's a tough question i don't know i think i just want to i just hope that somebody somebody listening takes one thing that can help them better their life in some way and i'm asking this one i'm closing it off because i'm curious what's your middle name <laughs> mcniven Oh, it is. I thought you had two last names. No, McNiven is my last name. It's my oh, mother's okay. maiden name. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, okay, okay. Wow. Okay, now we know. Look, I've already learned something today. We've all learned something. <laughs> Amazing. Well, this brings us to our next portion, which is all about our theme discussions on the topic of positivity. And I'm going to throw this first to David. Can we truly have complete positivity in life? Or do we need contrast? Does there need to be a yin? to the yang well i think we can always look for the silver lining but i think that naturally life just has its ups and downs and we need that contrast otherwise we don't know the difference um i think i had this conversation with some friends recently about like well actually it was partly with you robert it was based on our talk about artificial intelligence and people falling in love with robots and we were like is it any healthier to fall in love with a robot that is never going to die and never change or get old? And like, how does that change the way we think about relationships? Mm -hmm. And the whole thing that I was advocating for was the reason our relationships are precious is mm -hmm. because they are temporary, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Like if we're thinking real big picture and why it's so important to be present with people and like, be positive with people, build them up, encourage them, make them feel good is because life is precious. Life is short. Life mm -hmm. is, you know, this thing that we need to savor and make the most of. The antithesis to the vampire pandemic, right? Or, <laughs> or predicament, I should say. Uh -huh. right? you just, if there's no expiry, it has no value. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, Jamie, what's your thoughts on that? Well, one? I think you're, you're bang on. And I think that, you know, the stuff that I teach law of attraction, positivity that kind of stuff it gets sort of a bad rap at times because it you know people think that's just airy fairy fluffy always being positive and it's not at it's not it, it, there is obviously elements of that that we see online but i think you know the reason that i so first of all i'm a certified law of attraction facilitator as you mentioned and the reason that i chose to get certified in the work that i do was because it wasn't all about just manifesting stuff so um you know to backtrack a little bit my, i had already been a certified life coach for many years and i had clients but i felt like my life was always like it'd be really good and then it'd be months where I'd be feeling really, really down. And I just didn't understand why I was down um, until I met Michael Lozier, who wrote this book, best-selling author of the book, Law of Attraction. Uh, he's been interviewed by Oprah and Friends Radio many times. And it was like, when I went to hear him speak in Vancouver, it was like a gong went off because his book is broken into two sections. The first section is you gotta clean up the, the stuff that doesn't feel good. You've gotta find a way to heal all of that stuff and find the gift within that stuff in order to truly manifest your desires. And so that really resonated with me. Um, and so to exactly what you said, David, the, the contrast in Michael Lozzi, he talks about contrast. In fact, there's a whole section called clarity versus contrast. It's a worksheet mm. in the book. It's a free downloadable worksheet. If you're looking to manifest something in your life and you're not quite getting the results, you have to first go and identify all of the contrast that's in your life and look at that. Uh, in the book, he talks about that contrast is just anything that doesn't feel good in your life. And he actually says, it's your best friend. You know, so that, that that's the kind of healing that I want to look at is where we're not afraid to go to the dark places. We're not afraid to look at the stuff that's really eating at us and find the gifts within that. And that to me is how healing happens. It's not about positive thinking, it's about positive vibrations 
And I can go into that a little bit more about that mm. in a bit if you want. Yeah, so that sounds like a very, um, I'm going to say like, self-aware approach of like, using positivity all the time isn't necessarily going to help you out, yeah. especially when you have things you need to clear out, right? You need to have the space, you need to have kind of set the blank canvas with which to move forward and, you know, lead with positivity, if I'm hearing you right. Well, yeah, you, life, like that's what we call toxic positivity, right? And so mm -hmm. life, you know, in the book, he talks about how, you know, and that's what really changed my life and why we're talking about positivity today, because in the book, he says, happiness is your actual, is your natural state. Okay. So when I first heard that, I was like, wow, I think deep down, we know that to be true. But then if I'm, I was at that time when I was learning about this, I was like, well, I'm not always happy. So what's, what's that about? But, you know, I know for me, like when I go down to the beach, that's my art, that's our natural state. You know, when I'm just like, I'm happy, it's not like this, Hey, all that, it's not that we're talking about. It's this authentic happiness, this almost like more like a peaceful contentment where you're happy, just in the say. flow of life. And you're just like, for me, I feel it when I'm down at Sunset Beach here in Vancouver and I just feel, you know, calm and happy. Like that's our natural state. Um, but it's kind of like the neutral state a bit, right? You're not too on the high and you're not too down too on the low. You're at that nice balance level. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that there's this uh, culture of toxic positivity. And I think that it's um, it's like when you like, because can we swear on your show? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> shit, <laughs> shit, shit. the shit is going to hit the fan in life, right? You're going to be diagnosed with an illness. You're going to maybe, God forbid, you could be, uh, you might get a divorce. You could get fired from your job. So life is not always up here happy all the time. Like shit is going to happen. So the real, what I know why I like doing this work is that, you know, we're not always supposed to be happy all the time. That is our natural state. That is our compass. I always say joy is your compass, right? We're not supposed to be down all the time either. Right. But when, so, but shit happens. So then what do we do? How do we process that? And I think it's important to have tools to be able to process that authentically so that we can move up what I call the vibrational scale. So if you look at uh, vibrations as moods or feelings, um, you know, happiness being up here and fear and doubt being way down here, um, we can't always be up here all the time, right? But if you're down here, something's happening. It is. It doesn't help anyone to say, well, just think a positive thought. Like, you know, that doesn't help. Mm. Sometimes the first thing is to have a good cry, right? Yeah. To, or to write out your feelings and to gradually, authentically, lovingly move up that vibrational scale. But I do think it's also important to know that we are, we deserve also to feel happy and be happy and, and dream big and have our dreams fulfilled. I think that's what, what I learned from the training that I took with Law of Attraction that Michael Losey said to me, it's okay to dream big. And it's okay. And I think that that's important because that helps us to bust our, our, our limited thinking as well. Mm. Uh, on the point of kind of getting things out, I'm going to throw this to David. You mm. do a lot of writing. You do a lot of journaling mm. in that. How has it helped you kind of bring you to that place of contentment and battle with kind of the other end of the spectrum? Yeah. Well, you know, there's a lot of like a lot of what Jamie is talking about, like just really are applicable skills. So like there are many different kinds of writing for many different purposes, right? Like sometimes you're just like cleaning out gunk and it's just like, what the fuck is in my brain right now? How do I, you know, have it out of my brain? Um, but then there's also writing that is like retraining yourself. So things like affirmations, things like you know, literally just giving yourself compliments of any kind or telling yourself, like trying to replace faulty beliefs, you know, that you have, like, I mean, I'll pull it up. Why not? This is like the best. Oh, he's doing it. Do he's, it. He's bringing it out. Okay. Uh, I want to put up like a technical difficulty sign, but I think it should be right. like getting eye book sign. So, so in, wow, this actually might make me emotional. Um, when I first uh, moved into this place, I was like, looking for work and looking for a lot of uh, stuff, like, and also processing stuff from my last living situation. So just as a way of centering myself and not getting too down on myself, because being unemployed, feeling your money like dwindling away is like, is really hard. Yes. So some of the affirmations I would give myself were, you deserve love, you have love to give, you have worth, period, I love you, period. I love you no matter your money or work status. I love you when life is difficult. I love your appearance and your style. I love you when you think you're alone. I love your voice, your mind, your creativity. 
There are hundreds of jobs in the world. It's a numbers game. Interviews and rejection are not personal. I forgive you. I forgive you for being defensive. I forgive you for spending and needing money. I forgive you for not knowing everything. I forgive you for being scared of people. I forgive you for wanting to control people. I forgive you for struggling as an artist. And then many, many times in the mornings, I would just be like going through and just like really trying to internalize that stuff because it's like negativity. You know, we've talked about this before, Robert, like our brains have a negativity bias because it's a survival adaptation. Like we're trying to keep ourselves safe. We're trying to solve problems before they happen. Yeah. But what happens is that takes us out of the present and it makes us you know, agitated and fearful and all of that stuff. It's like those lower vibrations like Jamie was talking about. Yeah, so that um, first off, congratulations on fitting all that onto one cue card. <laughs> I don't know yeah. how you pulled that off. <laughs> uh, second, uh, this creative little gentleman has shared a lot of those affirmations. I remember, I think it was through Bitbutton or through your own personal channel. But oh, yeah, uh, had yeah. Shared I put a lot them on TikTok, <laughs> which is great. I love that. Uh, no, it's good. Spreading the love and all that. Uh, Jamie spreads a lot of his own love, but that's usually in his own private bedroom. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, I'm never not going to do it. Um, but yeah, no, that's very true. And speaking of the vibrations that and the uh, can Jamie, can you put up the, the spectrum again, the arm spectrum? Um, so there's kind of like the lower end you're talking about and then there's a the higher kind of like over positivity one <laughs> So on that end of the spectrum where Jamie was serving there for a moment a platter of something uh, This brings me to my second question Jamie where can too much pro positivity get us into trouble? What what happens when you're on that high end of the vibrations? Yeah, I think that great question and by the way I love those affirmations and I just want to say one quick thing that the reason those affirmations are probably working for you is because they came from your own words, right? You didn't, you didn't yeah. probably did. You might have read some of them. Like, oh, I'll take that one. But this is what what I teach uh, with my clients when I work one on one is when you make affirmations, they have to come from your words, not yeah. something you read because something you read might not resonate with you. It might be too far. Uh, it might be out of your belief system or whatever. So I just wanted to acknowledge you for coming up with your own affirmations that feel good for you. And that's what this work is all about. It's identifying what feels good for you and then doing more of that. And I can't tell you. So when people come to me and say, hey, should I do a vision board? I'm like, well, do you want to do a vision board? Because, yeah, maybe somebody says do a vision board. If you're like, oh, that sounds silly, then that's actually sending out a negative vibration. So that's why it's not about positive thinking. It's about positive vibrations. And that comes from doing what feels right for you. I can't tell you what is the right thing for you. Only you can, right? So when it comes to too much positivity or where could that be a bad thing? The first thing that comes to mind is like, I remember somebody, a friend of a friend saying, um, you know, very into affirmations and spirituality and had a lump on her breast and was like, it's okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, you know, affirm it away. And I was like, oh. So what I learned in coach mm -hmm. training is that there's positive denial and negative denial. So where positive, where, where positivity comes in hand, handy or negative denial is that like, let's say you're at work, you're working with somebody, you're kind of like, oh, they have some kind of interesting quirks. Um, but you're just going to say, I'm not going to judge them. I'm just going to send them love. I'm going to, I'm going to just ignore their kind of quirks that are annoying me because it's clearly about me, not about them. And so that's okay to deny those kind of things or to deny certain negative things you see out there in the world, because, you know, you just don't want to let it bring you down. But then there's the negative denial is that's positive denial. Sorry. The negative denial is when you're like, oh yeah, you've got a lump on your body that you should really go to the doctor and get it checked out. That's not doing, you know, you need to go to the doctor and get that checked out. So I think that's where, or when it, when people just say, oh, just get over it. I'm like, that is like, those are like the four meanest words anybody can say to anybody. You know, I, when I broke up with my, my, I was with my first boyfriend for 10 years. When I broke up with him, um, I was still sad three, four months later, like crying. And, mm -hmm. and somebody said to me, just get over it. And like, I think you're depressed. You need to go on meds. And I said, no, no, I, I was with him for 10 years. Why is it in our culture, people were supposed to get over things like that? It took me six months to really process it before I felt like just getting even out there again. And that's, that was my journey, but I really honored how I was feeling. So I hope that helps a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Um, one thing I want to clarify that came from my own experience of going uh, through therapy and exploring personal development around, you know, the spaces of positivity in that is a piece that was given to me by a therapist that I really loved was how um, 
something like happiness, which I think we need to create a separation from positivity. Mm. I sort of see positivity as like actions that we can take in or mindsets that can be had that will lead you towards more of a space of the emotion of happiness, right? The of joy and, and elation in that. Um, that happiness isn't something that we acquire. It's something that we feel, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you can go through a lot of that positivity and have a nice balance with it against, you know, like not to say that negativity is is like good, but you're going to have the yin and the yang, right? You're going to have those things and you're going to have like, you can be really happy or really sad, but still make positive choices and still have a positive mindset in that, right? You can still move towards that and have that um, inclination. But, you know, like you, like, you can make positive choices and still be really sad. Yeah. You know, well, like, it, it's like, if you're going through a hard thing, right, you, you have to go through it. Exactly. Uh, that's the positive choice. Exactly. Well, like in the, so in, in the book that he talks about, like how, if you're down here on something and then like, you can't just say a bunch of affirmations go here. It's called a quantum leap, but you can move up the vibrational scale gradually. Um, but one of the quickest ways to go to, to, move up that scale um, is just to focus on something that you're grateful for. I know it sounds cheesy. You hear it a lot, but it really does work. It really helps to um, reset, you know, and in my seminars, I give out these pins to everybody to help people have a vibe reset. They all pick an area of their life that they want to have a vibe reset. And again, a vibe or a vibration is just a mood or a feeling. Um, and so to really find the gift within that. Um, and yeah, oh my God, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, no, that's great. Um, to to David, I'm a little like because this alludes a bit to what Jamie was saying. Alludes to kind of the idea of like practices, right? Having those affirmations or things that you do. You have a bunch of practices. I feel that I have come to know from you that can be things such as affirmations, journaling, mm. reading. You know, like physical stuff, like going on walks and stuff. Like, how has that contributed towards your processing? of the negative and getting into a more positive space me this is to david, david okay david. Uh, to me i think yeah. um i mean honestly like kind of referring a bit to what jamie was talking about earlier as far as um you know us having the i can't remember how you phrased it but just that capability of feeling the negative and the positive is like our goal if i can be so bold shouldn't necessarily be to like lock in a specific state in our life. I feel like our goal is to just be more aware of what we're going through and be like really present with it. And by having that compassion and mindfulness for ourselves, we're able to then extend that to other people. So like knowing what you're feeling, right? Not judging it and being like, okay, well, I guess this is what's in me right now. How do I uh, just embrace that and immediately by embracing and acknowledging what you're going through right now um, that changes it whether it changes it for the better or for the worse like it really doesn't matter um, but we start to realize that like feelings like you were saying Robert are just this ebb and flow of like sensation in us and if we ever pause to really look at any sensation that we're feeling it's never the same like we're just constantly changing in like any given moment it's pretty incredible mm -hmm. um and so in that sense, uh, once we build that awareness, like we just have a bit more spaciousness. It's what I said in that last episode of like, all we can do is like meet our edge and soften. That's from Tara Brock, mm -hmm. who's like the best. I love her. Um, and it's really, I don't know, that just seems like all we can do. So we can, uh, again, we can like do affirmations to like, try to retrain our brain we can practice gratitude even for the small things because i think what's even more important about gratitude than um like having like a really good list of things you're grateful for or just like being able to think of something what matters the most is that you feel it mm -hmm. like that you're actually like paying attention mm -hmm. to what the thing mm -hmm. is you can't just say oh yeah you know i'm grateful for my friends i'm grateful for this apartment um i'm grateful for the weather i guess <laughs> just listen yeah, like, yeah. like yeah grateful for like, water and dirt you know, and um hard surfaces <laughs> if you're not feeling it like what jamie was saying if it doesn't feel like it actually came from inside you mm -hmm. it's not going to work so whatever the thing is you have to actually feel it out. And I think that's how people get lost, right? They don't acknowledge their feelings. They don't have emotions or whatever it is. They just get into this place where they're like, 
okay, well, feelings are dangerous or emotions are unpredictable. So what, yeah. what now? Well, I can just tell myself they're not real. And then, yeah. And then it just goes and goes. So that's, that's what I got nice. <laughs> from that prompt this, you gave me, Robert. This is actually a perfect <laughs> transition into my third and final question, which I'm throwing a sidewinder at you both because I'm changing uh -huh. this slightly. Yeah, yeah. If we as humans have this capacity or just natural, uh, you know, innate uh, being that goes through ebbs and flows, right? That goes through the positive and negative emotions, um, and this, this kind of like fluctuating nature. Why do we need to have study and research and practice and positivity? Shouldn't we just naturally have it? Why do we have to have this as a focus of study? Ooh, that's a good question. The, the only thing that comes to me is I just think that we're all born perfect. Like when a baby's born, like they're just perfect, innocent. They ask for what they need. They are, they cry when they want to cry. They're ha joyful. They're perfect. And they think that what happens is we just, you know, through well-meaning teachers, parents, we, we pack on layers of stuff that doesn't actually serve us. So unfortunately, I mean, hope maybe eventually we won't need it, but, you know, yeah. we do need people who have, uh, you know, gone ahead, who've done the healing work, who are at a place where they're thriving and feeling good and living their dreams so that they can show others the way as well. And so, um, yeah, I think we just we just need it. And I think that's probably one of the one of the reasons why it's like I have, feel like I'm always constantly peeling away the layers. And sometimes I feel like, oh, my God, am I ever going to be healed? Like, I don't know, mm. like if you ever get to that point, but I definitely feel like I've I've definitely come from very dark places in my life and had a lot of drama happen to a place now where there's still stuff that happens. But I'm just a much I'm better able to. Yeah, I just feel better. I feel better and I'm mm. able to, I have tools now to help me get through those harder times. So. Mm. What about you, David? Awesome. Well, um, you know, not to sound trite, but it's just like having pause is so important. Mm. Uh, positivity. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's I thought you were talking that. about like cat pause. Uh, Everybody has to have like animal pause. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so when you have pause, um, <laughs> Mew. what's happening is it's that combination of self-awareness and also, you know, knowing enough about yourself that like, you're going to take yourself on that positive path. That's going to be like healing for you or healing between you and the person who like, you know, triggered this need to pause. Right. So pausing both helps us when we're uh, triggered, like in a negative situation, but it also really helps us in our positive situations because how else are you going to appreciate it? How else are you going to connect with yourself and therefore connect with other people if you're not actually taking the time to do it? Um, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it's just like, that's just how I think about it. It bears uh, repeating. Yeah. yeah. It bears it repeating. Bear David. pause repeating. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. But it's like, yeah, so that's why it's a practice, mm -hmm. right? All we're really trying to do, like, we'll never get to this, like, perfectly unperturbed state in our life. Because Back to baby the status. World, yeah, because the world is full of stimulus. But when we have pause, all we're doing is training ourselves to go from that place of, like, reactivity to, like, what's a good word for it? Of just, like, awareness, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> of just mm -hmm. really having that sense of... Um, you know, I can do this. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, that's, that's amazing. I, the, the piece I would add to this is that it's, it's a bit of a combination of what you've both brought up as I see it almost as like that trades person who's really good at their craft, who's really good with that hammer or that bow and arrow or whatever your thing may be. You are not born with those. You might be perfect in nature, right? But then you get older and the world molds you and changes you in that. But you're never born with any tools. So you need to have somebody who is out there who has practiced with that hammer, practiced with that bow and arrow, practiced with that, you know, screwdriver, whatever, and they can pass it on to you and provide you the tool you were never born with. Mm -hmm. So it it's part of the reason it, it feels almost it's it's kind of mess because it feels like oh well we're born and we have the capacity to go through all this and the highs and the lows and the ebbs and the flows but why, why then why can't we just you know navigate it on our own but it's that's why we're a community and that's why yeah. we are a community of varying experts right that's why we have doctors i'm never going to do surgery on myself um i will never do my own haircut david clearly has <laughs> so <laughs> do my own haircut <laughs> 
<laughs> I just noticed he got a haircut recently. Um, but yeah, it's just I think we need to have those tools passed on to us and it's what puts us through the generations. Yeah. Um, Can I add something onto yeah. that super quick? It's just like related to positivity and also like our last episode about boundaries. Like, I just want to speak this <laughs> both for the listener, but also just, you know, for myself is there are people who want to meet your needs and there are people for whom you want to meet their needs and like you'll be able to be finding that fit with people there's like and that's what we call like community <laughs> like we're all in this together it is like a slight cliche but it's so true is we only like we can i don't want to say we can only validate our own experience because like we do have to validate our own experience but part of the human experience is like validating each other and being like, oh no, I'm here for you. Like you're not alone, yes. all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what I was talking about, how, you know, identifying what feels good to you and doing more of that, mm -hmm. you know, is because people don't realize how we're all, well, I think now the pandemic, people have realized how interconnected we all are and how mm -hmm. our choices matter and they affect the whole, they affect our community, they affect our, impact our friends. So when people are doing this work, I I'm like, I, I like to say it as like, you're not just doing it for yourself. You're doing it because you're going to have an uplifting effect on all those around you. You know, like the, you seeing you guys do this is so inspiring. I'm learning a lot too. Like you're lifting up people and you might not even realize it. And that is part of what, for me, identifying what feels good to me is about, you know, giving back, helping others, making a difference. Right. So everybody has mm -hmm. to find that sweet spot within themselves. Yeah. So, yeah, no, we've actually literally had, uh, couple people at least who have reached out to me and said thank you for putting this together i've learned a lot and i have uh, one friend in particular a mutual friend of ours that i won't name but who was going through a tough time is like i'm so glad i could listen to that while i was going through it so you see there you go. good job so i'm here and trend in this that i'd like us to all do is like us all each to look at our own camera and give pause by showing our pause and and give pause <laughs> okay good <laughs> um awesome so i'm gonna bring us to <laughs> what? Quick meditation. Yeah, quick, it's a good meditation moment. Quick animalistic meditation. Right? <laughs> Mew. Um, so I'm going to bring us into the fun of the show where we're going to have a little bit of comedic improvised fun with Jamie. Right. Uh, what we're doing is, hey guys, welcome to my channel. And it is an improvised YouTube channel. We're going to come up with a random topic and match it with a random image generator. And each person is going to be given a random image. They have to justify what that is as part of the discussion of what that channel is about. Then they're going to fling it to the next person. We are going to pick a random thing. What's it going to be? Jamie, can you give me a thing that you would throw? Tennis ball. And I'm going to get David. You want to introduce it? You want to kick it off? Yep. Hey, guys, welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to look at tennis balls. The uh, object of the tennis ball is very soft, very yellow, and multi-purposed. We're going to get into many of the purposes of tennis balls quite shortly. First, I'm going to throw to my lovely co-channel presenter, Robert, with this picture of a smartphone at a kitchen table. Hey guys, welcome to our channel. So the reason we're looking at- my channel, Robert. <laughs> Your channel? Oh, fine. Well, you know what? I can tell you this much about tennis balls. You hold them in your hand because you need to feel the weight of it. You need to feel that fur. You need to get intimate with your balls because if you're going to be a pro player, if you're going to really know the origins of the tennis ball, you got to toss it and you got to know it. So, Jamie, tell us about what was the first use historically about tennis balls mm, yes thank you hey guys welcome to my channel and i wanted to tell you i thought it was my channel <laughs> it's our channel I guess um, a right. lot of people don't know this the, his, the historical nature of tennis and the tennis ball it all started back in i think it was in the late 1700s believe it or not down mm -hmm. where you are robert in england by the ocean and there were a bunch of teenage kids and they just didn't you know they were bored out of their minds they found a ball of seaweed and they just started throwing it at each other um, and then they said hey maybe we could uh, take take this uh, long twig and just hit it <laughs> and that's how it all happened amazing wow and so <laughs> and so 
And so now, David, um, let's talk about how, um, you know, tennis really traveled around the globe. So after the English uh, dominated the world, they said to everybody, why aren't you playing tennis? <laughs> and they got in their vehicles, their buses, their streets, and oh, they brought it to Japan. Mm. This is a picture of a Japanese street. <laughs> Robert, with the following picture of, ugh, that's a boring one, <laughs> with the following picture of a beautiful landscape also by the sea, how did the Japanese handle it when they received tennis into their country? Well, when the English first tried bringing over tennis to the Japanese, they brought a very primal version of that seaweed tennis ball. And the Japanese like history and like they did for the remainder of time until now, they took that thing and they bettered it. They perfected it. So they started collecting seaweed locally to their own islands. So they started taking it in and they started sort of boiling it down and curing it into a solid form. And they encased it inside this fur. So they had this unique form of seaweed ball that was hairy. And the hairy seaweed what was the, ball. What was the animal fur again? I believe it was the mountain monkey. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so the Japanese term haijaikyu meant hairy oh monkey ball. Oh boy. <laughs> and so what they then did with this new founded device is what James is going to tell you all about with this picture of the Golden Gate Bridge. Like anything with hairy balls, it ended up in San Francisco. And, you know, it would, it, they really perfected it there. They were fascinated with the balls in San Francisco. And, you know, it, and, and believe it or not, well, the gays kind of, you know, really started to pick up tennis. And, um, <laughs> and then that's when they added the fashions, you know, that's who they got into it. And so, um, but, you know, it can be a double-edged sword and it can make you feel chained to something when you get too superficial, wouldn't you say, David? I would say that. And that's why we've included this picture of a tricycle chained to a lamppost uh, in our video today. Because what you have to realize is tennis is a hobby. You don't have to be competitive about it, but you can still build your skill at it. Robert's going to tell us all about the skill building aspect of tennis with this picture, another just lovely <laughs> nondescript picture of the sky. <laughs> yes, yes, David, yes, the sky. Because like you said, you don't want your hairy balls to be chained. You want to give them to the world, mm. to the sky. Mm. You want to lift mm. them up and let them into the night sky so that every single time you look up in that, so at, that skyline, you see a little star and what it represents is a hairy ball that you shared out so that other people could make oh. use of these hairy balls. That's when it started turning the tide. Within San Francisco's queer community, tennis proliferated and it became a whole sport for the whole world. Jamie, please tell us how it became a competitive worldwide sport with this image of what I think is Chicago. Well, as you know, it started in San Francisco uh, and then it just spread like wildfire. And of course, you know, um, when I think of tennis, I'm sure you do too, I think of Chicago, you know, um, because <laughs> yeah. it ended up, it ended up, and what's interesting is some of the, the, the tennis players ended up uh, on Broadway initially, um, and the cast of Chicago asked people who play tennis to make them more limber. So tennis has just gone global, and um and um, but it's a, it's an exhausting sport, and you know you've got to take a vacation from it for, at times. Which David, why don't you tell us about what this picture represents? Well, this picture represents the space between uh, two vastly different bodies. So when you think about when you think about sex, when you think about international trade, when you think about the game of tennis, you think about two different bodies, so to speak. So this picture, oh, I cut out. I'll be back. And it's true. And I'm going to pick up for David where he left off. Those two bodies are extremely important. Where those two balls, so to say, those representative balls come together 
It's what's in the center that matters. It's that center point between the two balls where you want to focus most of your energy, where you bridge those things, where you bring those worlds together, and you just get down on that center part as hard as you can. Jamie, can you close us off? Well, I'm going to I'm going to just tell you use the same image to inspire the last point. Well, I think this is the perfect full circle moment, Robert. I mean, it started mm. with a ball of seaweed and it went global. It went hairy. And now we're back here. And this is the perfect image for all of you watching to tie in everything we've talked about today. You might be at the beach one day and you too might find a ball of seaweed, but that could go global. You just never know. Your dreams are possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming to our channel. And thank, thank you for you coming for to your sharing. channel. <laughs> <laughs> our channel. Your channel, Who's my channel. channel. Is it? It's the royal we. And the point <laughs> is, go out there and share your balls of seaweed with the rest of the world. Get creative, people. Yeah. Holy, good game. Oh my god, that okay. was so silly. So I, I'm gonna... I wonder, uh, that'll be fun. I'll find some way to make a good okay. bit out of oh, myself okay. cutting out. Uh... <laughs> Amazing. Um, all right, so I'm going to take us now to our closing. This is the end of our show. Jamie, thanks, Sue, so much for joining us. And thanks, Sue? You... Are we thanking Sue? Huh? You said thanks, Sue, so thanks, much. Sue. Yeah, thank you, Sue. <laughs> Your name's Jamie? When was it Jamie? Uh, Sue, do you have any closing thoughts from our conversations today? I do. Uh, no, I um, I just, I think that, you know, going back to, you know, um, the law of attraction for a moment, I think that, I just want to throw this out there because it just sometimes gets a bad rap and that, you know, but I want people to know that if, you're attracting negative things over and over and over and over. It is essential. I want you to not blame yourself for what you're attracting because very often people are like, well, you attracted that. And that's also not very nice. But mm -hmm. I do know that if you are attracting, we all attract negative things from time to time. But if it's two, three, four, and it's consistent and your, your relationships are being impacted or your health or your job, it is essential that you go within and identify that contrast as the gift that it is, because it's showing you on some level what you don't want. So the way, the key to start moving up that vibrational scale is to ask yourself the vibe reset question. And that is, so what do I want? What do I want? And that's what David did with his affirmations. You know, that's so important to go within and just ask yourself what it is that I want. And remember, you're not just doing it for yourself. If you can't do it for yourself, do it for everybody else. You're doing it for your community your family. Um, and so it, I, I promise you, as you move up that vibrational scale and you identify what feels good for you and you do more of that, you will have a positive impact on everyone around you. And I believe that that's why we're here. Amazing. Thank you very much. Any thoughts, David? Mm. I've said it all. This is the last episode of the podcast. <laughs> he has <laughs> There's no nothing more, more I can add. <laughs> he is a empty vessel. <laughs> the um let's see. Let's see. What's a good like note to end on? If this subject is interesting to you, check out Positivity by Barbara Fredrickson mm. as well. It is all about so she has this concept that I think she calls the upward spiral. Because what you start to notice as like, you know, everyone's heard the concept of a downward spiral where it just seems like everything is snowballing and getting worse and worse. Um, but there is an upward spiral where the more we are in touch with what we want and what we need, the more we get it, the better we feel, the more uh, we want to keep doing that for ourselves, and it becomes this lovely thing. So I wish that for everybody listening. Me too. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> And my final thought that I would just add to this is kind of the yin to the yang that we've talked about in all this balance. If you don't want to go into a full book about this, but just want to look at more of a specific concept, look into the negativity bias. I think it's good to understand why we have it mm. and what it is there for, because it is a defense mechanism, it is a survival mechanism. The reason we have negativity and let's translate negativity into fear or paranoia or whatever that might be, that gut feeling. It's part of our lives. We have to take it with the positivity or the other end of that spectrum and take it all together. And thank goodness we have people we can turn to who will teach us about it, especially if we're younger and don't know as much. Yeah. 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 And sorry, I do want to also echo what Jamie said of like, when we know that our line has been crossed, really all we can do is then be like, 
oh, well, what is the inverse of this? What is the, you know, thing that I, the need that was violated when this happened? And like, yeah, it really does become your best friend in a way. Yeah. Like Jamie was saying. And I also just wanted to offer all of your listeners, like I do free sample sessions. So if anybody's really feeling stuck and they need a 20 minute reset, um, reach out to me and let me know what area of your life is totally confidential. Let me know what area of your life you want to have a breakthrough in that you want to resolve. We can't fix it in 20 minutes, but I can definitely help to help you shift and, and hopefully do my best to point you in the right direction. And I'm uh, willing to offer everyone a free 20 minute uh, sample session. So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jamie. Thank you for uh, nestling in in our little podcast of joy today. It's fun. Um, you can a pause follow- cast. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did I just? No. <laughs> no, no, no. I just added that okay. as a oh, joke. Pause cast. <laughs> That's a good uh, name yes. for a podcast too. <laughs> pause cast. Um, you can follow Jamie at Jamie Smith Coach on Instagram and Facebook, and you can also check out their upcoming children's book called Oh Yes I Can. Just watch me. That will be coming to stores, internet. How do they buy it? Yeah, uh, Indigo Jamie? Chapters. And I'll be posting it on my page too, obviously. But uh, it's going to be on Amazon as well. September, early October. The latest. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. And if you want to see uh, Jamie's adult book, just check out his OnlyFans page. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> he would never print a book. It's all video. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to Tissues of the Day. You can follow David at BitButton on Twitter and Instagram. And you can follow myself at Robert F. Mackay on Instagram. Subscribe to BitButton on YouTube and turn on notifications so you get notified of everything that comes out. Also, if you love the show, please donate at patreon.com slash bitbutton. And for anybody who's out there who's listening to our show on podcast, we do have a video version of this. It's on YouTube. So go check it out. Go listen to it. And most importantly, Stay wet, internet. Positively. (laughs) Ah, I got that. (laughs) Uh, But like also, wait, uh, that was not a joke about being like HIV positive. Uh, Oh, boy. (laughs) Oh, my God. I don't think anyone would go there. (laughs) I don't know if anybody took it that way. But wow, blushing really hard right now. (laughs) Yeah, you are matching your shirt color right now. (laughs) I'm so sorry.